What's up guys, it's Drak and I got a brand new video for you doing a review of another community-based pistol design. I actually put off the top pistol design comparison thing because I wanted to get this one in here because how do you do it without the one that started it all? So this is it. This is the Venturi Mark 8 and it's probably in terms of like standalone designs that have stayed under the same name. The one with the most iteration that I can think of, at least the most versions that have made them out and into the world. So the Venturi originally, and I have a video way back in the Wayback Machine about it. I think my Venturi was a Mark III. I have no idea, but this is the Venturi Mark 8. It's the most recent version of the Venturi, and it comes to us from the same creator, Northeast Designs. It's been over at Northeast Designs, and they've been working really, really hard on this for a long time. I'm actually in a group chat with them, and they've been talking about this on and off for the majority of the pandemic, where they just wanted to tweak and tune this and make it the best that it possibly could be. And this is, I think, the original mag in grip like pistol powerhouse. As Ben describes it, it's actually a 200 FPS no compromises primary that just happens to be disguised as a secondary. I mean, if you look at this thing compared to like literally like it's the length of my forearm. This is no no compact sidearm. Look at it next to the next to the box. This is the Mark II. They ought to call this a Magnum. But uh, the Venturi is a seriously huge uh, pistol. So to go over a few of the features, we'll start with the most obvious difference. If you're new to the Venturi, it just looks like a monster of a hand cannon. If you've seen the Venturi before, these are very new. These sheet metal side plates that go on both sides of the Venturi that have the, the laser cutout Venturi logo on them, these come from my friend Roboman Automation. To be clear, that's the same Roboman Automation that makes the Ethereum triggers that I sell for the Nexus Pro. He's doing a lot of really cool stuff. He's got way more machines up at the factory Amsterdam than he knows what to do with at this point. I'm really, really excited watching his business grow and watching him collaborate with lots of creators in this space, including myself and Northeast Designs. So these side plates really give a full look feel, structure, level of polish to the Venturi that hasn't been present on any previous model. As cool as FDM printing is, and as much as it lets you do things like make incredibly sexy vertigo gray on red grips, there's no substitute for custom machined parts. They're just very, very nice. They're the real cream of the crop. So they rise to the top. And while you don't have to be a macho man to prime this thing, it does have three full inches of draw, and it comes with a chunky, chunky T-cap on the back. This is pretty much the only way to prime it. There's no other way to get the kind of leverage you're gonna need. You prime back from here. There's also two hex keys that are included with the blaster. They sit inside this t chunko and they, uh, they allow you to access parts of the blaster if you need to do field repairs or replace parts. Again, that's three inches of prime, pull back like that. I'm trying to remember what spring is in here. I think that it's a Turf Pro 25, so realistically, a K25. Now there's two grip options now as well. You can either, out of the standard kit, you can build a standard Talon Magwell, where uh, it's just regular straight Talons. And this is my preference and the reason that mine looks like this. You can also, for a slightly different grip geometry, depending upon what Talons you've already married yourself to, you can get a angled Talon grip. I like it better with the straight Talon mags. That's the kind of stuff that I use in all my other blasters, and I like to keep things as consistent as possible. I've actually got a whole list of features that I could mention, but, uh, after talking with Ben and playing with it myself, some of them aren't as super duper relevant. This one's kind of interesting. The center of mass for the pistol is like pretty close to the trigger well. That's just kind of cool if you're into really balanced sidearms. Although again, this is, to call this a sidearm is, is a little, a little bit of a stretch. It's huge. My Desert Eagle is smaller than this thing. And when I say that this thing is huge, I'm talking about all of it. Like the muzzle is huge. The grip is huge. The prime is huge. I have like large hands. That's how my grip fits on this in order to comfortably use the trigger. Now the trigger does feel pretty good. It's got four different points of actuation, which means it leads to a pretty smooth trigger pull. It definitely doesn't feel real steel-esque in any sort of form or fashion, but it's a good trigger. Now you have to have large enough hands to really get a grip on it and wrap a finger around it. But if you have larger hands, this is a comfortable pistol to use. You don't necessarily have to be Hellboy sized to wield this thing comfortably, but what I can say, and I don't know if uh, Northeast Designs is gonna agree or disagree with this, but um, we're here to provide you an unbiased review. This grip is humongous. We had everybody in our company grab it, take a look at it, see how it felt, see how it fired. And the big dividing line was like, literally, if you were six feet or taller, you were like, that's a big grip, but I could use it. And if you were six feet or under, you were probably like, this is a little large for my hands. So that's just my take. If you're looking at picking one of these up, hopefully you know enough about, you know, your grip ergonomics and your size that you can comfortably wield a hand cannon 
like this. Other than that, it has a standard barrel. It uses a link style air brake, which means that theoretically, and I haven't done this yet, but theoretically, if you fire it like that, it still doesn't sound great, but theoretically it's a uh, dry fire safe. As far as the mag release goes, if you guys notice there, it's a Vanguard style of pusher in there, which means that you can put the mag in at any point, whether the bolt is closed or open. And then there's a little nubbin on this side, as well as on this side, you could do an ambi mag release either way. Obviously, if you're right-handed, your thumb's gonna pop up right like that into there. Now, it is easier to gravity drop this thing when the blaster is primed. When it's primed, it just drops right out. When it's not primed, it kind of sticks in there. There we go. All right, and back and sealed and ready to Again, to call this a primary and pistol form is very correct. To say that it's had a lot of work done in getting here is also correct. There's been a lot of iteration and a lot of love. I don't know explicitly what the pricing on this one's going to be at this time, but I can put links down in the description box below where you can head on over to the Northeast Designs website and you can take a look at Ben's pricing model. I think that they're selling everything only when it's been made. That means that there's no pre-orders. I rely on pre-orders to do custom stuff. I know that a lot of other makers in this hobby do as well. But in Ben's case, they are only selling pre-made things so that when you buy it, if you see it, it's gonna ship. And I think that that's really good for their mental health. And I actually approve of that. If pre-orders make you anxious, that's a really good way to run your business. Only sell things that you've completed on your own time and are done and ready to go. It's something that I'm kind of jealous of at times because definitely when you're staring down you know, 10 lynxes or a bunch of fish or what have you, like it can be a daunting task and I get it. In addition to that, if you buy a Venturi, Ben's gonna send you a bunch of paperwork on it. I could go through these, but all I can say is out of all of the printed blasters that I've had the pleasure of reviewing and using, like this is a company ready production style, like Hasbro doesn't give you instruction seats this comprehensive, this nice. And then down here it says, warning, no slam fire, and I hate my Epson. Don't we all? I think that uh, when Rage Against the Machine was ambiguous about what machine they were gonna rage against, uh, we can all assume it was probably a printer of some form or fashion. But that's enough talking about the Venturi Mark VIII. I think that it's sweet. I think that it's chunky. I like its dimensions. Let's put it over this chronograph outside and see if it lives up to the hype. All right, guys, so we went ahead and brought the Mark VIII out here. Let's throw it over the chronograph. This flared magwell is kind of interesting. I think that the flared magwell in general is a good idea, but by doing this knurled texture for the entirety of the print, the inside of the flared magwell wound up knurled instead. So that's just a little funny. It doesn't really, like I said, it still works. It's just, it's just amusing that that's how Ben's slicer worked. So let's go ahead and prime, get over the chronograph. No read. That's 206, their claims ring true, 212. These are bamboo style half length darts, by the way. Duplicate 212. So, I mean, this is every bit of a, a 216, just walking all the way up, 210. So this is every bit of a primary in a secondary package. I think that that is a, a true fact and definitely is gonna be a relevant factor when we stack all of these up in our great pistol comparison of sorts. There are a few things as I'm playing with the build, like it's held together with some rods, the rods are held together or held in place by these zip ties. And that's not like a full on critique. I mean, what is it? Like uh, the space station has zip ties on it. So that that's perfectly serviceable, perfectly fine. I really dig the overall color schema that Ben went with for mine. I think that the revival of the serial number seven plate from my original Venturi. I like to see it living again on this blaster. The mag release is quite nice. The only thing that I don't personally love is this kind of like bronzy, brassy sort of secondary color. I really like the gold that was on the original one, but beggars and choosers and all that, this is in fact a replacement for my original Venturi. And I'm uh, very, very happy to have one back in my armory so that I can make more content about it. Let's put a few down range. Again, these are clearly 200 FPS shots. Aiming at this tree. There's a hit. There's another hit. Good. And uh, while I'm definitely pulling a little bit to the left on some of those shots, I can certainly see how if this were the form factor you wanted to be using, you could make that happen for competitive foam flinging. I mean, 
200 FPS in a lot of different game types is valuable. The ability to maneuver around cover might be relevant depending upon what kind of cover you're playing in and around. Like this is a cool option and it definitely brings a lot to the table. It's certainly maxing out on like what you could possibly justify as a pistol build. However, in that arena, it's delivering some serious, serious power. It's got a lot of plunger tube and it has the advantage of having its barrel above its action, which means that if you're used to that kind of shooting, it feels very natural. The darts go where you expect them to go and they exit in the manner that you expect them to exit, right? But I, I like it. The only complaints that I have personally are the, the they're, not, they're not real complaints for me. One is that the grip is quite large. I think that if you go into it knowing that the grip is quite large or you have hands that can accommodate that, that's not a big deal. Especially since after years of complaining that some manufacturers probably make their handles way, way, way too small, it's nice to have one that's just clearly designed for people who are a little bit larger. I think that my biggest thing is I wish there were a cleaner way to do this T-pull. Maybe one that wasn't quite as large, maybe one that wasn't quite as gaudy. That's the only part of this silhouette it really looks off to me, but it does make the silhouette clearly cartoonishly toyish in a sense. So uh, it's it's not a real complaint, right? I wish that there were a slightly different T-pole, but I understand why this one is built the way that it is. Other than that, I mean, if you're in the market for some big iron on your hip, this thing will uh, deliver that and then some. It's a lot of pistol in this category, but I think that it's sweet. I wanna, whoop, I'm out of a, can I deprime it? It does not deprime, which is why that theoretical air brake. My seal is actually, here wait, did you guys catch that? That's not a bad seal. That's pretty good. Anyway, I'm uh, excited to put all of these head to head to head now that I finally have all of them in my studio at the same time. I think that we could do the end all be all mag and grip pistol comparison over here for you guys. So if you're not already subscribed, get subscribed. If you're not already on my notification squad, it would mean a lot to me if you would hit that notification button because that video is one that we're gonna put a lot, a lot of effort into. We're gonna put a lot of editing into it and we're gonna try and help you guys make the best decisions possible for yourself as you consider, if you haven't already, getting into the mag and grip pistol category because it's a lot of fun. It's a really cool kind of action and way to fling foam if you haven't tried it already. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the comparison very, very soon. Much love, Blast On, Drac out. Uh -huh.